In this lesson, we're going to learn the flex layout. Well, flex layout is similar to the stack layout. In stack layout, we can manage the stack layout child with horizontal and vertical direction. But in flex layout, we can achieve more advanced things like orientation, alignment, and adopting to various screen sizes. So let's dive into the Wheel Studio so that we can learn the flex layout. Let's quickly remove this code. Now let's add a flex layout. And inside this, we'll add few children of flex layout. Let's add three label controls and I'll set the text of this label to first label. Then we'll set second label and the third label. Okay, now let's add some background color for these three label controls. All right, here on the device screen, you'll see three label controls with different background colors. Now in the flex layout, let's use the justify content property. This justify content property tells us how to organize the content. Let's set justify content equals start and you will not see any change because our label controls are already at the start of the screen. Now let's use justify content equals center and the labels are right now in the center of the screen. Similarly, if we'll set justify content equals end, then the labels are at the end of the screen. Now let's use justify content equals space around. And you'll see that we'll get one unit of space from the borders and two units of space between the elements. The center space is twice as compared to the space around borders. Okay, now let's use justify content equals space between. And this will provide the same space between the elements and we'll not get any border space. Okay, now let's use justify content equals space evenly. And with this, we'll get the same space between the borders and the other elements. All right, let's remove the justify content. And now we're going to explore the align items property. Well, align items property is basically used for elements alignment purpose. If we set align items equals start, then we'll get the label controls at the start of the screen. And these labels will only occupy that space where they can fit properly. Similarly, we can center it or put it at the end of the screen by using align items center and align items end value. Now, if we'll use align items equals stretch, then the labels will occupy the full screen. All right, let's explore the direction property. So we'll remove the align items property and then we'll use the direction property equals and set the value which is row. And this row will be used for left to right direction vertically of our elements. If we'll use the row reverse, then you'll see that the direction from right to left vertically. Now, if we we'll use the direction equals column, then the direction will be from top to bottom horizontally. And if we we'll use the direction equals column reverse, then the direction will be from bottom to top horizontally. All right, now let's explore the wrap property. The wrap property will organize the location of the element. Let's remove the direction property. And right after that, we'll add three more label controls with different text and color properties. Okay, here I have added three more label controls with different text and color. 
Now I'll add the font size in these label controls. Let's add the font size equals 20 units. And then we'll use the wrap property equals no wrap. And we'll not see any change here. And our label controls squeeze to manage the space in fun line. Now let's use the wrap property equals wrap. And here we'll see that the other label controls will go in the second line. So if there is not enough space at the end of the screen, then our other label controls will start from the next line. And for this purpose, we have used the wrap property equals wrap. Now if we'll use the wrap property equals reverse, then our elements will start from bottom to top. Okay, we have covered the flex layout. So that's all from this lesson. Now I'll see you in the next one.